The following podcast was recorded on Tuesday, March 28th, 2023, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Well, Jim, as you mentioned, beyond deposit data, the H8 report highlights other series that give insight into what's happening with the banks. What does it tell us about how much banks are borrowing? Yeah, so if we jump to the next chart, uh, this is important to, to, to tie it in with everything else. This is banks borrowing money for the bank. So this is bank borrowings. It jumped 400 plus billion dollars, actually almost 500 billion dollars. Um, in the week ending March 15th, as the bottom panel shows, total bank borrowings jumped 24%, 25% a quarter <coughs> in one week. Not only the highest we've seen in 43 years, far and away the highest. <coughs> what is that? That is the banks going to the Federal Reserve and borrowing from the discount window or from borrowing from their other facility. Now, what does that mean? As a bank, uh, if I experience a lot of withdrawals, a liquidity crisis, people come to me and say they want out. I've got a bunch of assets. I've owned treasuries. I own mortgages. I own. I have loans. Um, I own commercial real estate uh, uh, securitizations, et cetera, et cetera. These are not cash. These are securities and these are loans that are not immediately convertible into cash. But what you can do is take those types of securities and loans, go to the Federal Reserve and say, Fed, here's a billion dollars of securities and loans as collateral. Give me a billion dollars of cash so that I can meet my redemption requirements. That's the discount window. That's the Fed's other borrowing facility uh, as well. That jumped $300 billion. Well, the total bank borrowing jumped $500 billion. What's the other 200? That's the federal home loan banks. The federal home loan banks do the same function as the Fed, but they don't report weekly on their borrowings. They only report that quarterly in their financial statements a month after the quarter ends. So we won't know until we get their March 31st numbers, probably towards the end of April, um, what, their, what their borrowing or lending has been to banks. The point is, these bankers are telling us what they think. They've raised half a trillion dollars in loans so that collateralized loans, because their overall balance sheet didn't expand, in order to get cash, in order to meet redemptions. And that gets us to the next chart. So how Go much ahead. has cash surged? Right. So then there's another line on the item, which is cash. How much cash have banks holding? And so this shows you their cash holdings. It surged 25% too, just like the bank borrowings did. It, it surged about $400 billion so that the banks are now holding a little over $2 trillion of cash. So if you look at the borrowings and you look at the cash levels, um, I think those are the telling statistics. What are the bankers doing? Mobile banking, people want to leave, yield seekers, they're not ready to raise their deposit rates because that kills their profitability. They're one, they want to sit on a giant mountain of cash so that if anybody wants out, good, here's your money, go leave. Because what we don't want to do is try and prevent them from leaving or try the, uh, or get them to uh, believe that there's some shakiness with the bank. Because what we've also learned from mobile banking is now that we can have a digital run on a bank. So the media on March 10th, the day that Silicon Valley Bank failed, had cameras in front of all of the main branch and a bunch of the branches. And there was nobody in line. <coughs> but we know there was an outflow like we've never seen. That was all mobile banking. As a banker now, you've figured out enough. I don't want to give people a reason to question me. I don't want to give them a reason to reach into their phone, reach in the pocket, pull out their phone, and in five minutes transfer their money to a brokerage account and buy a money market fund. I could be gone in two hours. And one quick example of that, Signature Bank. On Friday, March 10th, Signature Bank went to the home loan banks at noon Eastern time and said, here's a billion dollars of collateral. 
we need a billion dollar loan to meet redemption requests. That's at noon. They got that loan by 1.30, 90 minutes later from the home loan bank. And they immediately turned to the home loan bank and said, now we need another two and a half billion dollars. So here's another two and a half billion dollars of loans and securities. Give us another two and a half billion dollar loan because it's gotten that much worse in 90 minutes. They got back to them a few minutes before six o'clock, right before they closed and said, okay, you've got the other two and a half billion. They said, no, now we need $18 billion more. 20% of the deposit base left the bank in four hours. That was not considered before the month of March this year. If you asked a bank or a regulator, could 20% of the deposit base leave in four hours? That was not considered possible but now it absolutely is possible. So that's why you're seeing these giant borrowings and you're seeing these giant cash levels because nobody wants to spook their depositor base anymore. And as I emphasized in the beginning, if this is all really weeks and weeks in the making of changing behavior because of a new technology that we're all seeking yield, the banks are not ready to raise their deposit rates because they don't want to wreck their profitability but they might be forced to. In the meantime, the yield seekers are not going to stop. Okay, my bank's not gonna go out of business today. All right, so I don't have to panic and pull my money out today, but I am gonna look for a higher yield alternative and I'm going to go do it. 5% is a very different world than zero. And that's where the funds rate is right now, is at 5%. <laughs> and so I'm gonna look for some other options with my money other than leaving it in a Chase account Chase is now paying, Chase pays one basis point on their savings account. But if you're a preferred customer, you get double the rate. You get two basis points. I, I'm not making this, I'm not trying to be funny. This is actually what they, they say on their website. You get two basis points on your preferred account. Oh, but why wouldn't I take my life savings and put it into a Chase securities brokerage account and buy a Chase money market fund that's yielding 475. It'd take me five minutes to do it and I could pick up a lot more money. The point is that's exactly what everybody's doing and that's exactly what they're gonna to continue to do. So this deposit bleed, it may not turn into a hemorrhage, but it will continue to be a bleed. And I think it's going to lead to broad-based declines in credit being available from regional banks. As a group, the regional banks are 80% of commercial real estate lending in the United States, 80% comes from a regional bank. 50% of personal loans comes from a regional bank. 40% of commercial and industrial loans come from a regional bank. If they pull back because they're unsure about their deposit base, that is gonna hurt the economy. So yes, this is a, a bigger deal than just, are people panicking out of regional banks because they don't trust them? But it's more of about, a, uh, about yield seeking. And I think that once we understand that this new technology, mobile banking, like all technologies, changes behavior. It does more than just make marginal adjustments. It changes behavior. We've got everybody now thinking about yield and now reaching into their pocket and doing something about it. The nature of deposit taking for banking might forever have changed. And the nature of setting deposit rates might forever have changed. I know banks don't want to believe it because it means bad things for their profitability. They have to now be more competitive with market-based rates and they don't want to be more competitive with market-based rates. They like those fat margins. You know, I give my money to Chase. They invested in a T-bill. They get four and a half percent. They give me two basis points because I'm a good customer and they keep the other 448 for themselves. They don't want to have to offer me 420 and then they get invested 420 at 450 and they keep 30 for themselves. Um, but that might be the road we're going down with the banks. It might be the reason that the bank stocks cannot rally, even though we keep thinking that this crisis is over because it's about profitability now. It's no longer about solvency. Jim, thank you for all your thoughts today and thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions about Arbor Research, Bianco Research, or Arbor Data Science, you can contact us by emailing Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Thanks again and have a great day.